Audio in three, two, one, you're live. Welcome to the show. Dr. G, we have a special guest in studio. Can you guess who it is? Uh, no. Right next to me. Kat is, uh, flew in from Austin, Texas, our co-host. She's here actually in Santa Barbara I in the studio. In your screen. Isn't that, oh my isn't that cool? gosh. Uh, <laughs> we also have, this is a really great show, guys. We're going to get right to our guest here. But I wanted to uh, to welcome back our co-host and our our, our man in the sports world. I mean, he is the man in so many ways. Uh, holy fit, it's Lewis. He's, he's fit, hey, Lou. Hey, hey yeah. welcome back. I'm glad to be back, I should say. And I, I'll say this on the low. I know that compliment is going to cost me about 20 bucks. So I've been <laughs> 20 bucks? What, show do, what kind of show do you think this is? Is this the Thanksgiving show? No, this is... Uh, oh, okay. This, this is the show where we charge... <laughs> We, we get caught up and get all the payments from uh, Fit Lou there for all the plugs. There you go. No, Absolutely. he is the man and he's here. And we have, I'm so excited. We have, do you guys watch American Ninja Warrior? Uh, I know you and your kids do. Your kids My do, kids Kat. constantly tell me, uh, especially after watching Lindsay, uh, that I could not do what she's doing. <laughs> well, it well, there reminds are, me of my limitations. There are 13 <laughs> seasons and I'm going to, we're going to give it, hand it over to, to her uh, just a moment. But if you haven't watched American Ninja Warrior, where have you been? It's uh, some of the most elite athletes in the country. They complete, uh, compete on the world's most difficult obstacle courses. Uh, it's thir uh, season 13 again, NBC. Uh, eight nine central and uh so we're gonna we're gonna take it from there lindsay lindsay eskelson she's yeah. a mama to two she's american ninja warrior right. nine ten and thirteen <laughs> she's also a multimedia designer uh and i'm a strong she's mama, mama strong, right, mama strong. Oh, can, yeah. that's right, there, there you go there you go all i can say to you lindsay is ouch <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and how do I get arms like that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you just carry babies around all day. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. There's a little more to it than that. Is that how Lewis did it? I can, I can, I can confirm that. I can confirm that because I have two boys. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you right now, you know, coming up on 50, and I'm still I'm still keeping it together. See? There, there you go. go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Lewis tried to trade me, but it didn't stick. I, it, that, they look, they yeah. fell back off. Yeah, Lewis, right. don't do that. I'll have to swoon over here, okay? Don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> you made all Richard all hot and bothered. <laughs> uh, hey, Lou, take it away. Lindsay, I mean, I, it's it's an honor for me to sit here and, and share this this stage with you right now. I'm a huge fan Aww. of the show myself, Aww. and I've had aspirations of wanting to do it, try out for it, and then it gets close to tryout day, and then I back out because I'm just afraid. <laughs> Being a football player, I'm afraid of heights, and I can't swim. So if I fell off into the water... I would have a whole lot of other questions to answer as to why I look so ugly trying to get out of the water. It's only three and a half, it's only three and a half feet. You can stand oh. up. You're good. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and throw myself under the bus and I want to talk more about you. Um, I've had three near drowning experiences, one of which was in the bathtub. Oh my goodness. We'll, we'll talk about that later off air. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, yes. And so, you can wear some floaties. <laughs> There's another story behind that too. I don't, <laughs> I don't float because I'm well aware of the fact, right? That when you're in the water, you, you have to relax in order to float. And I'm literally, I'm fighting. Don't this. float. I, I can't, I can't relax. I can't relax. Um, but let me tell you, uh, I'm, I'm curious because me being an ex-athlete myself, playing football, baseball, basketball, track, okay. um, periodization in terms of training is very important that you can maximize your training efforts right when you're coming up to your season. Sure. So for someone like yourself that had two kids before that last show, when did you find time to train efficient enough to perform the way you did? You know, this year was completely different than any other year I've competed. Usually I kind of work out, you know, maintain my strength all year round. Sure. And then kind of a few months leading up to it, I really kind of like, ramp it up and then peak right at the time where I need to compete. Well, this year um, I got the call and I, I hadn't even been cleared to work out yet. So um, once I was finally able to start working out, I slowed my way back in because I didn't want to like pull muscle or something, but I, sure. I, I knew it was going to be very different this year. So I did what I could. I got into the gym maybe once or twice a week when my husband was able to watch. 
Um, I try to involve my kids as much as I could, you know, Sure. lift them up in the air, put them on like a little baby weight vest, do some squats, you know, climb the stairs, things like that at home. It's the um, and then a lot of my, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, and then a lot of my workouts happens when they went to bed at night. So it was, you know, pretty late at night. Um, do but, you train indoors at home? Like when you're training at night, are you in the backyard, the garage? Or are you, um, you have another room in the house just in case the kids wake up, have a nightmare, that type of thing? You know, I, I work out. Um, my husband did, made a little setup in the garage for me. So I had some cannonballs and some different like ropes and things I could hang, hang on, which was nice. And then I also just kind of ran around the house, ran up the stairs, did cardio push-ups. I had a pull-up bar. I would do like as many pull-ups as I could a day. Yes, so I just, I, tra I trained super hard for about six weeks straight, which is not very long considering I had just had babies, but right. I, knew my, I knew my strength wasn't going to be there. And so I went in with a very different mentality this year. Um, I knew my strength and endurance were going to be lacking. So I kind of more so had to rely on muscle memory yes. and um, technique and just the fact that I've been there before. So I kind of knew to expect. So it's a little bit more comfortable going in as opposed to the first time when you stepped out there. Oh, 100 <laughs> uh, percent. I, I couldn't imagine. I remember the, the first time I went from high school and I played in front of a lot of people in high school in terms of football. But the first mm -hmm. time I got to Washington and I come running out of the tunnel and there's 80,000 in the stands. It was like something I like, saw in a movie, like the, the stadium is going like this. I was yeah. dizzy. I didn't know <laughs> if I was sick, but I knew I just ate. So it wasn't that I didn't have food in my stomach. I had all right. these weird things going on. But then yeah. I was just emotionally, like I was an emotional wreck and the crowd would yell and you could feel the wave of the voices coming across you. Um, did you find going through the course, the last round versus the first two was, like you said, it was a little bit more familiar. And did you see, was it more, is it more strength or is it more stamina and endurance? Um, well, this was my third year competing. So I kind of had an idea of what to expect. And there's kind of a formula. You get there and you really, it's a surprise. You have no idea what obstacles you're going to get. So you basically have to train for everything. But in the qualifier course, um, there's six obstacles. You kind of know what the first obstacle is. That's the shrinking step. So it's kind of like you got to work on your strides. The last obstacle is the warp wall. So that's one you just, you know, you can train that one. Right. Um, and then the four obstacles in between, you know that there's going to be something that's like a swinging type obstacle. You know, there's going to be a super sketchy balance obstacle that you have to just throw your body across and just kind of use your forward momentum with quick feet and just pray. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. And then there's going to be some other kind of tricky one. And then the fifth obstacle is always really intensive upper body. So, so it, it is strength, but it also is endurance. But for me, I, I knew that I didn't have the endurance. So I took my time out there. Sure. Um, you ha typically you have about 30 seconds in between obstacles and they're going to tell you, you know, you got to go, you got to go. Right. Um, so I definitely took advantage of those 30 seconds to kind of like let my body rest in between each one. So, sure. um, so, you know, you know. I, um, I've been in the fitness industry for a very long time, a little over 20 years now. And mm -hmm. one of the biggest things about fitness, or should I say the foundation of fitness is stabilization. So how much does that play a role? Because you are pressed on, on the clock as well. Like we do have to move, you know, with some efficiency, but we also want to be, you know, be stable in some of the movements that we're doing. So how do you able to balance the two? Because I'm assuming I'm doing this because grip strength plays a big role. Oh yeah. If you get yeah. stuck, you know, the fingers right. start to give, the forearms start to burn. So how right. are you able to emulate that portion of it at home? Well, you know, um, <laughs> Like I said, I had about six weeks to train. So I know this might sound That's silly, but I was like, babies. what am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was a big portion of it. But honestly, I looked up um, like 30 day challenges and I did about six different ones of them okay. just to kind of like, this, this is all the time I have, you know, I had a good month of like solid training and then I like to kind of taper it off a little bit. So you're really fresh by the time you compete. So uh, one of them I did was a, a grip strength challenge, a 30 day challenge. You start off at about a minute, and then by the end of the month, you're going hanging about seven minutes a day. And I, it wasn't it wasn't continuous, but I would hop on for thirty seconds or a minute at a time. But it was about seven minutes a day that I was hanging. And then I also um, did a pull up challenge. I started off at maybe like five pull ups a day, and I think I was at the end I was doing about fifty a day. Fifty pull ups, a not day. all together, but okay. like in, in was, sets was, of like, I think I could do two pull-ups in a row, like really sloppy ones after I had sure. the babies. Yeah. And I worked my way up to doing about 13 in a row. So that's about kind of to show you how much strength I gained. 
But um, so that how long did it take to, to, to get to that from beginning to? Oh, I had six, six weeks. weeks. Six weeks. So six weeks, I went from two to 13 pull-ups in, in a row. Um, but out on the course, I know that, you know, the lactic acid's building up and you're, oh. you're getting tired. So I know what I need to do is I need to shake my arms out. I need to stretch them out. So in between obstacles, I use that 30 seconds. I drop down to my knees. You know, I'm, I'm stretching out and just yes. kind of like shaking yes. my arms out like interacting with the crowd a little bit to kind of buy myself some more time. Of course, um, of course. So I definitely just took advantage in between obstacles and just kind of really focused on my breathing and calmed myself down. Um, so I was kind of ready for the next one. You know, I, as you were saying, how you know, taking advantage of the rest, the time in between certain, uh, certain movements or going to the next stage. Um, sure. On your last show, I, I was watching and, you know, you were going over the over the steps, you know, the quick feet, quick feet, quick feet. Oh gosh. And me being a defensive back, that's, you know, it's, it's all about quick feet. I mean, if you have any wasted motion in that arena in terms of football, you're going to lose nine, nine, nine out of sure. 10 times. And some sure. of the guys that are coming at you, you know, on the, on the American Ninja Warrior course, nobody's running at you. So it's literally, and please correct me if I'm wrong, it's you against yourself against the course. 100%, 100%. So with that being said, how much does it matter weight wise? Because a lot of people ask me, some of my friends, you know, it's like, you know, Lewis, you were really good at American Ninja Warrior. And then somebody else would answer before I would say, well, he's too big, he's too heavy. But I'm like, no, I'm strong enough. So how much does that really play a role? Body weight versus grip strength? And like, there's you know, a formula to it. it. It it all plays a role. But um, I would say being heavier is definitely a disadvantage. But also my height is a disadvantage. I'm only five foot two. So someone that's six foot two, they're already a foot closer to the obstacle. So everything that I do has to be bigger and, and, you know, I have to swing bigger, but also I weigh, you know, probably a hundred pounds less than a lot of people. So for me to carry my body weight, like I'm strong for my body weight, sure. but it, like lifting weights, I'm super weak, you know? So, but that's why the sport's good for me because I can carry my own body weight well, but the more pounds you have, the more tired you get. So, but so, if you're super, if you're super efficient, you're on and off quick. So that, that so that's okay. So uh, for someone like myself, six three, mm -hmm. two forty two, okay. I probably, based on statistics, I'm probably not going to fare very well. It's it's going to be a little tougher. You just have to be super efficient. Oh, that's so you're the not nice gonna, answer. That's the nice you know, answer. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still possible because there's people out there that are around your your height and weight, and. A lot of times they don't do as well, but sometimes they do. It just depends on, you know, like I, I said, I will, I will say this, you know, I'm a big fan of throwing myself under the bus and other guys like me. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue with that. The, the times that I want to see the show, two of you play football. Yeah. There you no, go. Oh no, gosh. No, no. <laughs> I would just be like curl up in a ball. <laughs> no, but I'd have to catch her first. And from the looks of what I saw on the show, that wouldn't be an easy task. <laughs> By the way, uh, I want you to, that's right. By the way, I just want you to know that that whole dropping to the knees thing, I would be doing that at the beginning going, what have I gotten myself into? Please, God, take me away. I got tired just watching the show. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I, got, I think I strained a muscle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got to let Lindsay go now because she is a new, uh, she's got a newborn there. And uh, That's right. I, uh, congratulations. We have Thank one you more so question much. from Kat, Lindsay. Do we have one more? Yeah, sure. Yeah, and, sure. And Lou. Yeah, I'm looking great. on my monitor. They're both sleeping, so I'm good. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Perfect. Oh, we'll keep you all hour then. No, <laughs> we'll take the one free hour that you have. That's right. <laughs> it's okay. Look quiet. Hey, Lou, did, uh, great questions. Did you have any final before we pass you know, the cat and then say goodbye? I do have one more question for her. And sure. for, for all of our fans that are, that are watching, listening, and for other American Ninja Warrior fans that are going to see this at some point in time, hopefully sooner than later, what would you say to them if they are passionate about giving it a shot and just stepping outside their own their own personal box and and challenging themselves at American Ninja Warrior? What would be your advice? You know, I would say go for it. Um, I had been a huge fan of the show for a long time. And every time I watch the show, I'm like, I feel like I can do this. But I was always intimidated. I was, yes. you know, I, did, I wasn't confident. So three years passed by and I didn't apply. And then finally, um, one year, uh, Casey Catanzaro, she was another former gymnast like myself, yes. another little five foot nothing, you know, tiny little thing. 
she completed uh, the qualifier course, first woman ever. And I was wow. so inspired. And I'm like, if Casey can do this, I can, I can do this. 100%. So I eventually got the guts. I, I tried out. Um, I actually didn't make it my first year. I didn't really know the formula of what they were looking for. Right. Um, but th that year I went to go test the course. I got it kind of got a feel. And then the next year I came back, I knew kind of what they were looking for. And that was my, my rookie year when I made it all the way to the national finals. So Good honestly, for you for coming back. Yeah. Thank you. But you know, I just dream big. Um, you know, it's something you're passionate about. Go out there, train, do whatever you can. Um, put together a good submission video and follow your dreams. It, it's possible. And it helps if I may real quick, it, it helps to have a husband who also competed. Yes. And it's very, yes, yes, I did my research. Yes, and yes, he competed the year I'm, before. I'm not very creative and I, and I can't draw to save my life. I, I can't draw a straight line with a ruler, but it obviously helps <laughs> to have him there to help build the courses at home to give you somewhat of a simulation of what you're going through to get prepared. Yes, it does, uh, it definitely. <laughs> It's definitely preparation and, and just in life preparation is key to everything you know those 100%. who don't those who don't prepare prepare to fail practice so, makes perfect so a thousand percent and you were also a cheerleader as well right sac state yes mm -hmm, that's right yes let's see so you have a lot of other uh intangibles that were playing in the in the game yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i mean I, I feel like leading up all my background really prepared me for this i was a competitive gymnast for you know i was a gymnast for 12 years and then a college cheerleader so I was used to being in front of a crowd. I had the body awareness from gymnastics and I was kind of looking for something else to kind of continue, you know, my for sure. you know, being an athlete. So this kind of was like, it was all the perfect foundation for me to just jump into Ninja Warrior. So, you know, it's funny. I'm gonna, I want to end on this. I, if, if I did compete, I would never be able to finish the course because I'm afraid of heights. So I'd get to the end and I just, I just be staring up. So. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, congratulations on all your success with American Ninja Warrior and with the baby. Thank you so much. Um, I wish you happy raising the kids. Thank you. Uh, hopefully I get to see you again soon. Yeah, that would be awesome. Thank you guys so much for having me. Do you have awesome. one final cat? Well, I think you touched on it just a, a bit. And I was curious at what point during competition do you decide I'm going to do it again? You know, like, is it like falling in the water? You know, you can do it again. That, that's such a good question because I mean, some people are like in it. They're like, I'm competing until they say no, and until they don't invite me back. And me, it's 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 such a commitment, you know. So for me, and especially now that I have two kids, um, it's it is such a commitment. So I would love to do it, but I kind of have to see where I'm at in life, you know, how busy I am. Because you know, I'm a, I'm a I have mom to two kids. I'm working full, you know, well, actually I'm doing part-time right now, but I'm working. So it, I'm busy. And then also it's just, um, I feel like I have a little bit of unfinished business on the course. Ooh, I've now I, made it, I like that. I've now made it to the fifth obstacle every year I've competed and I would love a buzzer. So I have a little unfinished business. We'll see where I'm at, but I would love to get a buzzer. Get it, get it. Well, I'll with that. Here. We're going to let you go. And hopefully you have the, the, the two kids are sleeping peacefully for a little while longer. A top prize of $1 million will go to the winner if they can conquer all four stages okay. at the national finals in Las Vegas. To get there, competitors will need to make it through the qualifying rounds and semifinals. We have been talking with Lindsay Eskildson. Thank you so much, Lindsay. And good luck. We're rooting for you. Yes. Thank you so much. Thanks Mama for Strong. Mama, Mama Strong. Mama Strong. I love it. It's just, it's just a different name, but that that put a wig on that right there. That'd be hard. <laughs> yep. All right. I like it. Good All luck. Right, thank you, Lindsay. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Great. Um, so we should have now coming in um, Birdland Gianni and uh and nikki there she is that's next and then that's where you drop in that sound bite <coughs> okay did you want to stop no we can keep uh, well we should probably take the commercial break yeah that's what i was cueing you for okay uh no. you want me to say that or just go straight? Uh, e, well no i can just i can just slot, slot the sound yeah sound we'll slot that in and then we'll, 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 we'll come back all right nice good job lou I was, I was I was getting really excited. I had I, I had a ton more questions to ask, but I know I, I'm I'm limited. I know that's it's, I can talk this stuff so all tough. day long. Well, dude, we're gonna we're we're gonna line up all the athletes for you, whoever you want to talk to. We love this. Cat I'm and I so, talked about it. We love having you on it. I'm I'm lucky because Jalen and Jordan are over there, and they haven't, <laughs> I saw them they haven't walk heard in. 
Oh, they, they haven't said a peep. Like I, I told him before we came out, I was like, look, if you guys ruin this, I'm gonna punch you both in the throat. <laughs> punch you in the throat. <laughs> Good thing that's not on camera. Oh, actually, that is on camera, by the way. <laughs> that is on recording. <laughs> oh, is, I'm recording. Oh. <laughs> obviously let me just put it out there i would never hit my kids in the throat <laughs> oh my god that's 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 our little in-house thing right there we're not recording for the radio but on youtube <laughs> all right <laughs> okay so you know okay. Some people get it let's keep going we are um, ready stand in by 20 minutes in 15 minutes we have moss jacobs as well coming in all oh, right. actually we got to call him richard we have to call him yeah you want me to text you the number that he's, would be good he's yes on, he's on the he's on the in the field all right You're all right ready? let me introduce johnny and then i'll text richard the number okay where is jo and jump where in is where? john johnny i don't in see New York. he's oh. connecting to audio right now we have to wait for them to johnny, connect johnny, let me Okay, let me text his number to you then. Well, no, who? No, no, no. Who is supposed to be in this segment? Johnny and Nikki. Hi, Nikki. I'm not, There's Nikki. I'm not Johnny. Hi, Nikki. <laughs> I, I think so. Johnny. I didn't. <laughs> Johnny's a handsome man, but I mean, you're you're beautiful. I'm Jeremiah. Hi. Nice That's having Kat. you. Hi, Kat. You guys have heard so many to, great things. Uh, Dr. D with the hat there. He is our sound engineer producer. He's trying to keep the trains running on time here. Mm -hmm. And we got Very Lewis cool. Jones down in Venice, California. Hey, Lewis Jones. Hey, oh, hey how are okay, you? Okay, boss. Let me, we're just waiting for Johnny. Oh, waiting to see you. Now, is Johnny coming in on on Zoom or he, is he? He is. Okay. We are, I'm going to tell him we're all here waiting for you, buddy. Let him know it says it. Who's who's Gianna? Gianni. 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 Johnny. 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 No, it's G I A N N I. He he says, call him Johnny. Then he's there. He's just not oh. doesn't have anything yeah. turned on. Oh. He doesn't. He needs to he's, unmute and turn his uh, start his video. He's trying to now unmute. Yeah. I'm telling him. Nikki, I, I, I want to say this real quick before we get too far into your segment. Um, hey, do you hear me? <laughs> Say doing? again. Yeah. Say again. Can you hear me now? Now you're coming through, but we can't see you. Don't oh, be so oh. mysterious, Johnny. Let me get back. <laughs> oh, there you are. Wow. Oh, there's the handsome man. <laughs> and then there's Johnny. Oh. Hey, there's Johnny. We got Lewis go. Jones. You know Nikki. <laughs> We've got Cat. Cat went. Yeah, there you go. Here. Okay, right. we're gonna get started here in one second. I am just texting Richard a number. And Richard, we're going to call him at 1245. We're going to bring Moss Jacobs in, who runs the Hollywood Bowl, Santa Barbara Bowl, El Rey Theater, so Coachella. Uh, okay. Coachella. Jo Johnny, what? So, okay, well, let's do this. I'm excited. <laughs> Take a breath. Take a breath. Take a breath. <laughs> All right. Audio in three, two, one. You're live. Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. We have two very special guests joining us. Uh, from uh, well, New York City. I think Nikki's in New York. I'm not sure she can verify. Um, let me do a real quick setup here. Our very special guest today for the second half of the Jeremiah Show is Gianni Valente. He's the owner of Birdland Jazz Club, New York City. You know, he's a great friend of ours, great friend of the show. Um, and we're talking about something that is so exciting. Birdland Jazz Club, New York City is reopening July 1st. If you're in New York or anywhere near, get there. Um, and we've lost a few iconic music clubs the last few years. Uh, CBG, obviously, the family wash, and the list goes on. It's been a tough year for the music business and for everyone out there, the restaurant business and the music venues. Um, so uh, Birdland was not immune to the pandemic that took so many loved ones from us this year, so many beloved restaurants, so many bars and music clubs. Birdland continues a long history of delivering exceptional entertainment. <laughs> the iconic venue has been bringing live music to New York City since its opening in 1949. The iconic club made its name booking premier jazz acts on stage and it has since included Broadway, pop, cabaret, and comedy to their mm -hmm. roster. First opened on 52nd Street in 1949, and it was a bastion of jazz music named after Charlie Bird, the Bird Parker. Yeah. The stage was headquarters for the who's who of jazz, Count Basie, John Coltrane, Dizzy Gillespie, 
Miles Davis, Ella Fitzgerald, and so many more. Herbie Hancock has said to work at Birdland means you're, you have really arrived on the scene. Birdland reopened on December 2nd, 2020. No, excuse me. It's, it, it opened in 2020 in December, but it is reopening now in 2021 on July 1st. All right, Johnny Valente, welcome to the show. Welcome back, my friend. It's always good to hear from you. And now we can see each other. Now we can see each other. <laughs> Modern technology. So uh, you have a, I wanted you to introduce Nikki uh, to us, to our listeners. We've got a very special guest here joining you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, I, we have Nikki, <laughs> Nikki Shannon with us, one of our artists at Birdland Management. Yeah, she's a, well, I, I love this. You walk the line between being an active performing artist and a muse to those around you, Nikki, at her core. Nikki is a singer and a songwriter. She's an accomplished pianist and a true people person, as you can see and tell for the five minutes we've known her. Uh, she's written about a thousand songs. She's, uh, she wrote songs for Reba McIntyre. Tim McGraw, Ronnie Dunn, and he just finished an album she did in Jamaica with members of Bar Bob Marley's band called Kingston to Kingston, Kingston, New York to uh, Kingston, Jamaica. I love that story. So welcome, Nikki, to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So Thank are you, Johnny, for having me. <laughs> are you as excited as I am? Birdland is opening up. Johnny, how do you find the time? You gotta, you're open in a few days. How do you find the time? Uh, I got to tell you, it's been a crunch. But I'm excited. I'm also nervous about opening. You know, we've been closed literally for 15 months. Mm -hmm. So reopening is almost like opening a new club. Yeah. We've had to uh, rebook. Normally, during our normal course of time, we book a year to you two years <coughs> out. And we lost 15 months of bookings. So we're, we're trying to get our bookings in order. Of course, uh, many places have lost a lot of their employees. Mm -hmm. So we're struggling to get people to come back to work and we have to retool. So uh, it's like reopening all over again in 1949. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm like I said, I'm excited about it. Uh, and I couldn't be happier for, not only for my team coming back, for those of that stayed with us, but for the musicians and of course, all our guests. Yeah. Uh, incredible. And you had a, um, a benefit in January that we haven't had John to talk about this. And I know that's going backwards, but man, the, the musicians that showed up to, to support Birdland. And, and by the way, congratulations for being named the number one music venue in the world. Congratulations. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. So well, tell us a little bit about that benefit. Well, we, we were going to, I did not know what to expect after December. Uh, so a few of the employees put together a GoFundMe. And in a matter of two weeks, uh, with the help of the arts community, which was very heartwarming to see the outpouring that came from them, we raised over $400,000 in two weeks. Wow. And then we decided that we would put together a benefit show to thank everyone. And through that, a lot of the artists that had played at Birdland and people that are very dear to me, uh, they contributed their time with videos and letters and whatever. And so we did a two and a half hour show that just was fantastic. And like I said, it was probably one of the most gratifying moments I had as the owner of Birdland. And the reason why I say that, because of that $400,000 that was raised, a lot of it were on 10 and $20 donations. And I know we all went through a difficult period of time, yeah. but for people to find the time and to put their hard earned money that they needed to mm -hmm. live entertainment for Birdland and for all the clubs around the country was most gratifying. Yeah. Mm. Well guys, tell us what was happening on July 1st. Well, and why everybody to, needs to head to Birdland. <laughs> everybody. Did you let everybody in? You know, this, this, this is what we decided to do on July 1st. Uh, we, we represent one of the young pianists, Emmett Cohen. Uh, he was the recipient of the prestigious uh, 
Cole Porter Award. He's now become a Mac Avenue recording artist. Uh, he's been he's been a member of our family for, since he graduated from the University of Miami. We've watched him grow, and I just thought it would be very fitting to put this trio of uh, Emmett Cohen, Russell Hall, and Kyle Poole to reopen Birdland after it's been closed for 15 months. His music signifies what the original Birdland music had when it opened in 1949. And just to commemorate those years, we've decided to make the music charge the same as it were in 1949 at 99 cents. Wow. That's great. Nikki, so are you going to play chops on the piano with him, with Emmett? Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why not? I'd love to sit next to him. Why not? Yeah, why not? We'll see. He needs Nikki. a strong left hand. Yeah. <laughs> Nikki, I'm curious about you. Tell me a little bit. So you've written <laughs> a thousand songs, spent a lot of time behind the scenes then, obviously, doing that. But yeah. now you're starting to perform more. So what's your, tell us who you are in a sense of like being out in the public. How long is the show? <laughs> Give me your elevator pitch. <laughs> um, well, I, okay. So I, well, I was, I performed for a long time um, okay. as a uh, solo touring artist. And uh, when I was younger, um, as well as uh, a backup singer for several known artists. And um, I just, I, I was just really lucky. I've been very lucky and fortunate to be able to to write, but also sing and also support incredible peers yeah. and artists. And um, and I love to I love to be on the bus. I love to tour. So I, I did that, and then I, I I you know I I I never step away. I just I thought that it was a a time for um, for me to re like I did my albums and I toured, and then I and then Kingston to Kingston was something that poured out of me um, pretty much mm. by accident. Mm. I went to Jamaica to work with some artists and um, the artist, thank, thank God the artist was late and didn't show up. So I, <laughs> the awesome. band and I just started humming and, and they started creating the tracks for these songs. I would, and I would write the lyrics and then um, come back in and, and record it. So we did 14 songs in four days. Wow. Um, and it was, it was one of those organic, like, you know, uh, it, it just, it just was, it was a perfect storm. Um, and that's really when it, it just said, okay, it's time to, it's time to come back, come yeah. back uh, out. And, it, you know, I, I've been having a really good time supporting other artists um, and really uh, taking my time to be intentional of what I really want to put out there now. Cause this time it's like, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's for everyone. It's for me. So where, where yeah. can we get Kingston to Kingston wins it out? Not yet. <laughs> it's like, um, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny, can can will you will you please let Nikki share her album with us on the Johnny, show? Johnny, can here? I please share Thank my you. album on the show? Hey, Jeremiah, show please. I thought that we would do it once. You know, I've got a lot on my plate, Jeremiah. <laughs> no, come on. And, and I love this album, and I, I got to tell you, it came upon me accidentally she was playing music for me and one song popped out and I go can I can I hear that again and then she played me the whole record and I said to her what I'd like to do is bring the guys up and you know yeah. it's always warm in Jamaica so I figured I'd bring them up in February or March <laughs> in the of the winter. New York feel freeze them up a little bit so, so I'm mean. gonna bring them up to the club in February or March for a yeah. week and I'm going to let the album out just before that time. Oh, oh. Awesome. It's, it's, I think it should be the, the summer of uh, the summer of Kingston to Kingston to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is a oh, it's rum and coke. A special, it's a special. It's a special rum band. Rum it's a rum punch. Yeah. I'm in. Um, I, yeah. Well, we got to take a real quick break. Uh, we'll be right back. We're talking uh, to Johnny. Johnny Valente, Birdland Jazz Club, in New York City. <laughs> He is uh, opening up July 1st, 99 cents admission to select events, just like when Charlie Parker opened it I so many to. years ago, 1949. Oh, my I had to take a picture of that. I know it's oh, really, is, such is a that great cool? flyer. It's a so beautiful good. flyer. Uh, 
And we're talking with Nikki Shannon. We'll be right back. We're waiting. We're all waiting now for Kingston to Kingston, her new album. <laughs> we'll have to wait Whenever a little Johnny longer. Johnny likes to Johnny. tease us. <laughs> yes. So Johnny just ping Johnny, us. you know, okay. with, with email the website and just and beg, beg, beg. And beg. Uh, that's all I do with Johnny. I just beg. <laughs> send, him, send him flowers and gifts. Too. Okay. We'll be right back after this quick break. And we're coming back. Also, uh, Moss Jacobs is going to join us because the Santa Barbara Bowl is reopening and the Hollywood Bowl and all the West Coast, uh, Moss Jacobs, Jacobs has it covered. We'll be right back. Okay, you're clear. Lewis, you want to bring us back with a question? Sure. For either of our special guests. And then what time is it? 1245? Guys, so we got Moss Jacobs joining us. We'll, um, let's see. Yeah, I got it. Can you hang on though while, while he comes in? And Johnny, this is a great way for you to meet him. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Before we uh, do our music video. I've got nothing to do today. I'm just hanging out. Don't Nikki's on, on vacation. Drum. Say hello. Hello. Hey, Moss. Hey, Moss. It's uh, Jeremiah and the rest of the gang here. How is everybody? Everybody's good. I know well, you can't well, see us, but you. let me tell you before we're on a break and we're going to come right back with you. Um, we're going to come back with I'm one. I'm closing my eyes so I'm picturing you just like we were on Zoom. <laughs> I missed the Zoom. <laughs> Are you me a, uh, cooler, like a or something like you used to yeah, hang yeah, out everybody's, with? Everybody's in the most positive <laughs> life, Bob. Nice, perfect. Um, so, Moss <laughs> Jacobs, uh, just to introduce you before, before we come back, Nikki Shannon, she's a recording artist. Uh, sings with Bob Marley's band. We got a couple other people on the show here today. You can't see them, but uh, she's here from New York City. We've got Lewis Jones in Venice, California. Um, he's our, our co-host sports sports guy. And Johnny Valente, who owns Birdland Jazz Club in New York City. He's opening up on July 1st. So we're celebrating uh, awesome. these, these openings. He's reopening New York on July 1. July 1, yeah. And you can say hello awesome. now. Awesome. Yeah. All right. We ready? Hi, hey, man. How are you? All right, here we go, Jeremiah. Three, okay. two, one, your life. Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. We just had a very special guest join us. Busy, busy guy right now, just like our other guests on this show. We're celebrating the music and the reopening of classic music venues, along with owner of Birdland Jazz Club, New York City, Johnny Valente. He's he's joining us here. Um We've got Nikki Shannon, recording artist, singer, songwriter, Lewis Jones uh, at Harvell's in, in Santa Monica. Every yes. time, if you can't find him at home or on the in the gym, he's at he was at Harvell's uh, listening to some good jazz. And we've got Kat, who's in from Austin, Texas. She's in Santa Barbara today. Um, and with that all being said, now Moss Jacobs, a very special guest, joins us so busy uh, Moss, every time I, I open up anything on my phone, uh, all the venues that you oversee are booking, booking, booking. I know that's all you, Santa Barbara Bowl, the Hollywood Bowl, El Rey Theater, and the list goes on. Uh, check them out on goldenvoice.com to find out all the venues and all the music that's coming back. The world is not the same without music, and, and uh, I think that's what we all need right now with all this chaos in the world. The music will will settle everybody out. Welcome, Moss Moss Jacobs, Thank you Senior so much. Vice President, Golden Voice. How is everybody? Great. Thank Doing you. Good. Doing good. Doing <laughs> good. Putting one foot in front of the other. Eventually, I end up down the street. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, you end up at one of these videos, these music videos. Tell us about yeah, what's maybe. happening at the Santa Barbara Bowl. How exciting! Yeah. Well, we're 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 rushing now in a way to um, get these shows on sale that we now know are going to play in the late summer and fall. So we had three on sales last week, which was Van Morrison, Trevor Noah, and Haim from Los Angeles. And then this week we have four shows. I thought that was enough for any one week, but now this week we, we have four shows going up. Jackson Brown, Lord, who's playing off in May of next year, Wilco, and then Gary Clark Jr. So That's great. Four Chelsea really Handler, great I saw. Shows. You got some comedy. Yeah, yeah. So, but four shows on sale. All the pre-sales are happening yesterday and today, going good. But four public on sales in one day is probably, I think, the most we've ever done in wow. one day at the Bowl. Wow. That's incredible. Everybody wants the music. Johnny, are you fine in New York City there at the Birdland Jazz Club? Are you finding that's the same for you? Oh, Johnny muted himself. Oh. 
Come on, Johnny. Need to unmute yourself. <laughs> well, so Moss, uh, what's it like right now pre preparing for for all these shows? The bowl's been it's, closed. It, How long? It's Yeah, it's a rush, and everybody's in a rush mode. Um, all, all my friends who forgot about me during the pandemic yeah. are now reappointed. <laughs> they all won tickets. <laughs> well, I, I've been asking y'all for beer or a cup of coffee for a couple a couple of weeks now, and I can't yeah. get you either. Yeah. We're going to get this done next week. <laughs> yeah, I, Kat, I, you're in Santa Barbara at, at the current moment? I am. Yeah. How long are you in town for? Um, I leave on Sunday. Are you available between now and then? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make myself available. <laughs> Squeeze me in. Yay. Yeah. 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 I think Kat needs one of those specialized tours up at the, at the Santa Barbara bowl. Um, okay. Ma Moss, we didn't get to, that. we didn't get to talk about this last time. And we took you away from your San Sunday family dinner last time. You're so generous. <laughs> Gave us a personal tour. You've done quite a bit up at the bowl. Tell the, tell the listeners out there what they can expect when they come back to the bowl. Okay. Um, as, mo as some people know, the building was originally built in the 30s to be the home of old Spanish days, or as we call it, fiesta. But in the 60s and 70s, that party had moved downtown. So um, promoters, rock guys started doing shows. And now we move into the, into the 90s, and, and it's a 1930s building still. So oh. they embarked on a huge renovation project that we do every winter. There's another piece of the puzzle to be worked on the first thing they did was bring in 20 21st century power which was incredible like oh you, you're still working on 1930s power that's great wow. and gradually bit by bit by bit we've created this really modern state-of-the-art facility and this past winter in 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 a way helped by the shutdown of due to the pandemic they took that whole time to do improvements um most of which don't meet the public's eye, but it makes the place better and better. So they shored up the, if you're sitting in your seats, looking toward the stage to your left is a hillside. And that was shored up um, at great expense to make sure that hill never moves and never you know, think about moving. But right. along there, they built some um, really nice, um, they put more trees in when they put it back, but they have storage space and more post show um, hang out, you know, post-show party space, I guess I'll call it. Um, but they built storage areas. So all the bands cases, or when we have to, uh, when we have a GA show and the floors and the floor doesn't have chairs on it, we can put the chairs away and it cre creates a better looking stage environment. Mm -hmm. um, and then they, um, they resurfaced the actual stage itself and waterproof. It's little stuff that continues to make the place really amazingly good mm -hmm. but you don't really notice it first when you walk in um so seats have come in as people have seen the uh, the overlook is done um and they're going more solar every year they're adding more solar capability they believe that in a, i think by 2025 they're going to be uh self-sufficient with power up there yeah it's great well, uh, and we, we do have to take a break here uh, and we'll let you go, Moss, because I know how busy you are booking all these great bands. And don't forget me on that friends list. Um, <laughs> uh, but I do want to because I got Johnny Valente, New York Jazz I Club. They can hear you. Please be quiet. <laughs> Lewis is talking. To, we got the kids back there, the fans. We got Johnny Valente. Oh, uh owner of the New York Jazz Club in New York City, and we've got uh, Senior Vice President of Golden Voice uh, that manages the Hollywood Bowl to the Santa Barbara Bowl, down the list, Coachella I saw, God, I gotta get on that friends list. And Johnny, <laughs> Johnny's reopening the club on July 1st, and I think, I just love having the two of you guys here, biggest, some of the biggest music managers, I wanna, if I guys can, in I the business. I want to give a big shout out to John, because keeping jazz alive in this country, to me, is a amazing and wonderful endeavor and i'm and big respect to you uh johnny for for pursuing that i'm a huge jazz fan myself i grew up in a family where that was what was on the turntable all the time and, um, what you yes. what you do is incredible and having that club still be active and and important is um to be highly commended so thank you thank you very much thank you that's very uh that's very nice of you but i have to say listening to your lineup that you put together after what we've been through and you were able to book them, you've done quite a job, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. 
hunger, that's, there's a hunger out there that I'm trying to satisfy. There's a hunger, that's for sure. There's a hunger. Is that what you're seeing too, Johnny? That's what I was asking you when we were we had muted okay. or something. You know, there, but. you know what's difficult is that the bowl of all the artists are dwindling down because some of the greats are no longer with us. So it's become more and more difficult to get those big headliners. And there's a lot of competition for them. And uh, no one's budging as on the prices. So we don't know what to expect for the summer here in New York, but some of these artists are still demanding a, you know, a, a fair amount of money and they are out there, but they're all looking for gigs. But like we all know, there's nothing out there that's cheap. So we have to be careful of what we book and we have to, uh, just keep our fingers crossed that people show up. Yeah, You know, we're stuck in New York without, especially in Times Square, without tourists, without the hotels, mm -hmm. and without Broadway. They're all still closed. Uh, lower Manhattan is very busy and Upper Manhattan's busy, but the Times Square area where we are is still quiet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we wow. have to be careful. Well, thank you are, both. I'll thank you all of you uh, for 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 um, bringing music, bringing, bringing the music to us. It's my favorite thing in life. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. And yeah, what you all you. do, you, you work hard behind the scenes to, to bring it all back to us. These two icons that we have on the show today. And Nikki, we are still waiting for that album. Right? Did you send the, did you send the tracks over? Yeah, I, I went ahead and MP3'd it over. And also, Moss, I'll be in San Diego next month. So um, add me also to your list. <laughs> Moss has got a lot of friends. Black. <laughs> I take my, I'll buy you coffee, Moss. Where are you I'll playing you. in San Diego? Um, I'm not yet. I'm actually, I'm going to be out there um, writing and uh, working on a couple of production sets and actually coordinating a couple of small um, music uh, writer retreats uh, slash festivals myself. Well, I don't know. I can't tell you anymore. You're going to have to, you know, have I'm just going to put this in, in <laughs> Moss's ear. Uh, uh, put a, something to think about on the pillow there, Moss. Um, <laughs> Nikki, Shannon. Should, should maybe one day visit one of your venues and we got to get um, Johnny out here Johnny Valente, and we'll all hang out and have some coffee or something. Okay, guys, I got to let everybody go. Unfortunately, thank you, Moss Jacob, senior thank vice you. president of golden voice for your time and congratulations on the Santa Barbara bowl and the rest of the venues opening thank Johnny you Valente. Thank you so much, sir. And good luck on that July 1st, New York yeah. city. Thank you. Uh, Get down there, Birdland, going back to the 99 cents emissions on select events, Birdland Jazz Club, the jazz corner of the world. You got to get down there July 1st. Nikki Shannon, thank you so much. And thank you for having me. You we hope we see you all at the club. You're yeah. all welcome to join us. We're going to come visit, aren't we, Jeremy? Yes. That's Lewis it. Jones. If, Lewis if Jones. You call me, you're I, in. I'm not as I'm not as pretty as the other one, but you I, know, I will be Jeremiah's plus one. I <laughs> think, so I, I, think I can scramble. I can I scramble mean, together I, 99 I, cents. I, I, I'll buy I'll buy for everybody. We have a forever <laughs> guest list, so you're all on it. Thank okay. That's awesome. awesome. Thank you, everybody. Great. Thanks to Great. Lewis Thank Jones. You, Holy Fit 310. We'll be uh, we'll see you next week. Yes, when we have Miles Copeland on. I can't wait. Nice. Have a great week, everybody. Thank Listen you. more Thank you, and evolve. Pleasure to meet you all.